Okay, so that's where I am. And, um, you know, again, I just want to give you a brief introduction to the place. Um, as you can see, we're right next to the border with Somalia. So it's quite a, yeah, it's not exactly the safest place around but uh, for me it's really really critical to conduct anti-poaching operations here and support the Kenya Wildlife Service in trying to uh, protect the remaining elephant corridors um, and wildlife corridors. I really find this place very special because there's a lot of biodiversity here and um, we can go to the next slide Chris actually at this point. Um, and here you can see uh, what's called a red-legged cassina. It's also called, most of the region is completely virgin forest. It's indigenous forest, so really, really critical habitats for wildlife. Um, of course, very important for uh, forested, um, you know, forested area protection and just uh, biodiversity, really. So that's one of the big reasons why um, I really wanted to focus our efforts here in the Tana Delta, but also because it is an unstable region, it is insecure, and as a result of that, we don't really have um, a lot of organizations that are working to support Kenya Wildlife Service here. Um, and I feel like you know, for us, that was also uh, quite a determining factor because I'd been coming here, I've been coming here for about uh, 10 years now on and off in my capacity as an honorary warden and really seeing uh, all of the poaching taking place at an unprecedented rate, uh, some of the highest rates of poaching that I've actually seen um, in my country and, you know, uh, spoke to KWS and we decided, hey, this is a place where we don't have a lot of eyes on the ground, a lot of boots on the ground, can we make something happen? Um, and so then, of course, we then, uh, you know, started up the Lindsay Africa Foundation. And, you know, thanks to generous um, support from donors and online supporters and following, we were really able to grow this, really this movement and this passion for this forgotten place in conservation. So we've been active here since late last year and so far it's been going well. Uh, of course the, the challenges are still there um, every day but we're facing them as best as we can and um, I think at this point we can go to the next slide Chris. Um, so this is actually I, I took this photograph yesterday and I just wanted to share it because I thought it was so beautiful. But also, aside from obviously the amphibian and reptile um, biodiversity here, I mean, I see snakes almost every day in this area. Uh, there's a huge uh, mammalian biodiversity and avian biodiversity. In fact, we sit on the Eurasian flyway. So it's really a critical kind of migratory corridor for birds coming in from Europe into Africa and moving on into um, other territories as well. So I felt like this was the, a lovely photo just to show that. Um, this, the little zebra that you see in the foreground uh, was actually a zebra that we were following because he had an injury on his leg on the other side, which obviously you can't see because he's facing the wrong way. But I suppose that's what you're going to see on the next slide, which really is hard hitting evidence of what's happening on the ground here. So we can move on to the next slide, Chris. Oh, wait, before you press play on this one. <laughs> so this is not the next slide, but this slide uh, is just me showing you a little bit about how uh, how the landscape changes around here. Remember, we're sitting in the Delta region of the longest river in Africa. It's over a thousand kilometers long. And, you know, every once in a while we have floods and then we have the drought. And most recently when we had the floods, we had a pod of hippos that moved with the flood water and have set up uh, home like right next to the main road so I just took this video because I wanted to show everyone how special this place is uh, and how much biodiversity you can see like just on your way so you can play this video now Chris. Hi guys I am driving home and I just saw like the most amazing thing see this is my car this is the road and there's hippos in there so basically like when it rained and we had the floods in uh in tana river like a lot of these areas just got flooded through 
and some of the water has stayed and now we've just got like hippos right on the road. I'm going to show you a closer look. I'm going to cross this very empty road because hardly anyone ever comes here anyway. Oh my god, how fantastic is this? This is like the best day of my life. I could do this drive every day. So. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so I, I guess here I just wanted to show you like one of the spots that we found in the forest. Um, and of course the zebra rescue video is next, I think. So I'm just going to take you through like how it is. Um, but yeah, aside from obviously the bushmeat poaching problem that we have here, which I have to say is really huge Africa wide. Certainly here in Kenya, we're having a huge issue with bushmeat poaching all over the country. It really doesn't get spoken about enough because a lot of people tend to focus on the larger species, the elephant and the rhino. And I feel like as a result of that, all the other species kind of almost get ignored. Uh, but for us, of course, you know, each species is vital and really important. And so that's why we um, just focus on everything really. And part of protecting wildlife, you know, obviously you're directly protecting wildlife but part of that is also protecting their habitat which is really important and this being a fully indigenous forest um, most of it is untouched uh, you know it was really critical for us to come in and like really avert what was going on which i can say is at the moment in a crisis stage with regards to illegal logging and harvesting of wood for charcoal burning so you can now play this video chris and what you'll see in this video um, is actually, and I might be whispering in this video because I can't speak very loudly when I'm in the bush because then you just alert unwanted attention. Um, but you can see a, a site where the illegal loggers had made a fire and probably made a meal and were harvesting some of their um, timber. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is actually a photo from today. Um, you can see how thick that cable snare is. Uh, and that was on a zebra that had been walking around with it for the last couple of days. But thankfully, we managed to get the support of Kenya Wildlife Service, um, who brought in Dr. Rono, who's amazing. And we were able to tranquilize the uh, zebra and take this off. Um, and you can see just next to my finger there, it's got a, a bit of a sharp edge that had already started scraping her neck. We were very lucky that it wasn't very tight around her neck because otherwise it would have really just strangled her and started to cut into her flesh. So superficial wound for this one and it was a, quite a successful operation. So this was today's one. Um, and you can see that we've obviously covered the eyes um, and you can just play this video now, Chris, just to have an idea of how my morning went. I think if this is a video we can play it uh, but this is the zebra in the first instance where 
uh, he was hit by an arrow and then obviously the the head of the arrow which is the metal part uh, got lodged inside his shoulder and then the sheath the wooden part fell off obviously but he was uh, in quite a considerable amount of pain but also what's interesting to note about this is how untraceable cases like this are um, you know there's absolutely no way you would be able to track whoever did that unless obviously you're continuing to follow up and then you get leads from the community so the other thing that we do is we try to get the communities on side with conservation so that they are able to share information with us um, you know and we just help each other out that way and, and really try and uh, bring a greater awareness to the value of ecosystem services and wildlife in general. It's been quite challenging in this region though because Kenya really relies on tourism, like wildlife tourism. And uh, for this county in particular, that's not really a viable um, option because it just is an insecure area and the viability for wildlife tourism here is slim to none for the next 15 to 20 years. So that does pose another challenge for us in, in trying to conserve wildlife in this particular zone of the country uh, but thankfully you know we have had some successes and um, you know we'll just continue pushing forward and hopefully uh, just hope for the best that's all we can do really So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit about kind of what we do and what we've been doing for the last couple of uh, days here. And um, yeah, we're just going to keep on going. And uh, I want to say that none of this would have been possible without one, obviously, the support of, you know, people like yourselves who continue to share this really important message of conservation and anti-poaching and who really champion, uh, you know, like, what rangers are going through on the ground because they've been at it for like almost 18 hours a day. And I don't think that that's something that a regular person could really contend with on an average basis. So uh, really just a shout out to them really and all rangers everywhere who are really putting everything on the line just to protect these single animals because that's why we're here. So um i i suppose i could take some questions now but maybe just before i do that i want to uh ringoma hita just before i do that since my network isn't so bad now i'd just like you to meet my team briefly um and they can just uh, say hello or goodbye whichever way that goes to all of you and then we can maybe jump into question answer if that's okay um your your team must be on please Okay, thank you. So here's some of the team. Hey guys, <laughs> um, can you get Um, can you see them? We can see them. That's the we team. Can see them. <laughs> Jumbo. Jumbo. <laughs> you guys should. Hassan, Hassan. <laughs> they just do such hard work. And this is the awesome Dr. Rono. Say hi, Doc. Hello. <laughs> Jumbo, Hello, Doctor. Doctor. Thanks Jumbo. for Amusing. Thanks Amusing for your incredible up. work. <laughs> Karibu. <laughs> yeah, so, and, uh, and this is Mustafa. He's my driver slash cook for the day. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Wonderful. Wow. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> Rabia, thank you very, very much for the very special work you did and drawing us into it tonight, as Rod said, it made it so real for us who are sitting in very comfortable um, couches. <laughs> but Rabia, my question is, where are you usually based? In the same area, just in a different camp? So yeah, so this is my the ranger base um, here and then about 40 to 45 minutes down the road on the opposite side, 
um, there's like the landowner has a home there and that's where I spend a lot of my time when I'm not in the field with them, um, which is was not viable for today because I have absolutely no network there at all. So it's kind of like my place where I just unwind and get some other kind of background work done um, and plan other things. And how, how big is this area that you and your team patrol and look after the whole kind of so this particular area. section is yeah so under our agreement with the kenya wildlife service we cover the entire delta region um but for for the moment right now we're in a protected area uh called kipini and it's about forty thousand acres in size thanks very much Thank you, Cheryl. I'm going to unmute you, please. Hi, Rabia. I want to say thank you very much. You have shown my students how it's done. You are so passionate. And I would just like to say thank you for showing us how conservation is really done. I'm very emotional right now, and I'm sure my students are as well. Um, yes, thank you. And I'll just like to find out um, how much environmental education do you do in that area? Do you actually educate if you do catch poachers? So at the moment, to be very honest, we haven't, you know, we've only been operational since last year. Um, so it has been a challenge because obviously we're grappling every single day with one incident or another. But when we do find someone like today, we did find somebody who was carrying some uh, illegal palm wine. It was illegally harvested, about 80 liters. And we just, you know, initially, obviously, we were just going to book him at the station. But then we had a talk and he kind of apologized and said he'd never do it again. So, you know, we're not really out to just arrest people and like do stuff like that. Like we always we always try and have a conversation with them and see where they are and how they're feeling about things and if they would be willing to come on site and help us with information or if they would have an interest in wildlife conservation in a deep on a deeper level but for for a lot of the times i have to say with with poachers they are quite ruthless um you know especially when they're targeting larger animals and you know in in such cases we really do have to bring them to book and uh there isn't any room for discussion on that matter thank you Ravia. Yeah. i'm good and also, Sorry. I just want to say uh, to your students, thank you for joining this uh, video and this call. And, uh, you know, I hope that you will connect with us uh, outside of this call as well. And, and maybe one day come and join us. You're very welcome. Would love that. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I'm going to allow one more question. I'm very, um, uh, Sandra Hardy, uh, you can ask your question. I'm, Ravi, I'm very wary that you're running out of airtime and you need airtime where you are. And we don't want to put the, the vet in a predicament. So, uh, Sandra, please, uh, we're unmuting you. I just want to say, Asante Sana, for all the wonderful work you're doing. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Sa Sandra, for your wonderful uh, input there. Okay, they, now we can... Just take a last one. No, there's no more questions. Uh, there were some questions in chat, I was told. Chris, I haven't had a look yet. Yeah, I just want to know, Rabia, must we finish on time now? Um, yeah, I, uh, I just want to answer one question that I did notice on chat. So uh, I have already answered the other one about how, the size of where we work. There's one here from Rhonda saying, how much is the bushmeat poaching increased since COVID started? Um, you know, there has been an increase in some zones, to be honest. Uh, and that also is kind of as a result of also some rangers losing their jobs because organizations don't have the funds to carry on paying their salaries. And so with less rangers, uh, you know, of course the situation doesn't, doesn't go well. So I have to say that there are other contributing factors to um, bushmeat poaching increasing due to COVID. Uh, and that is definitely one of them. <laughs>